Hi there. In the previous video, we talked about boosting and we saw this little demo where in the beginning, we didn't really have a prediction going whatsoever, but we were trying to predict this curve. After that, we trained a tree model that wasn't going too deep, that was able to have this local correction on this orange prediction. From there, we got a starting point, a model that actually makes a bit of a prediction, but errors were still being made but because we could retrain and add a local correction, we also had a way to keep on improving. After a correction is applied, we basically make a new local correction and just repeat the same trick. Eventually, we are able to fit the curve quite well. And if we want to have less error, we could basically keep on going. Now, in this approach, there are lots of details worth discussing. But in order to do that, it would make a little bit of sense if we could just get a little bit more of an intuition into what is happening when we train a tree model. And that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to dive a little bit more into the intuition of training a tree model like what you see over here. And we're gonna use interactive widgets to do that. So what I've got here is a interactive widget with a slider, but before playing around with it, let's just explain how it is generated. I'm using the IPython widgets library that gives me an interact decorator. And effectively, I'm able to add a, a slider, if you will. And every time that this slider is updated, uh, the code below will rerun and then the view will also get updated. The slider has a starting point and an end point. And I have this vector of X values and I'm taking the minimum plus a little bit extra such that I never divide by zero and I'm taking the maximum and I'm taking steps of about one hundredth. And that gives me a, a slider that allows me to select from this region of X values. Then inside of that, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just plotting the original pattern that I was starting out with. That would be this blue line over here. And this would be the pattern that I'm interested in predicting. Next, I am plotting a vertical line and that shows where this slider is. So in the beginning, this slider is around the value five, and that is depicted by this uh, vertical line that's dashed over here. Now the interpretation of this line is that this is the place where I'm going to introduce a split as if I was the tree algorithm. And by introducing a split over here, I can say, well, everything on the left has an average value and everything on the right also has an average value that is calculated over here. So depending on the split, there's a different average on this side compared to that side. And that orange line can then show that. But that orange line also has now an interpretation of a prediction from a tree model. So what I could also go ahead and do is just show the mean squared error for this particular split. And that is shown in the title over here. So with that in mind, I will now start playing with uh, the slider. And hopefully this will also give you a little bit of an intuition on what happens when we make a split somewhere. So let's start all the way in the beginning first. And then I move the line. And notice two things at this point. Um, when I move the cursor over here, you're gonna notice that the left side has lots of high values. So the average would definitely be high over there. And then on the right over here, well, I've got some low values as well as some high values. So the average would be around zero, which is also what we're seeing over here. But also look at what happens with this error as I move this uh, split back to zero. You can see that the error actually goes up when we do that. And if I were to sort of move it back around here, we have a lower error number again. And that's because we are able to capture a lot of high values over here with this one average number. Now let's also see what happens when I move it further to the right. If I move it around the halfway point, well, it's pretty much a flat prediction. It's almost as if I'm just predicting zeros everywhere. So it's no surprise that I have a high error again. And then at some point, you'll notice that I'm able to capture something of a high value for this hill. It's just that because I'm only able to make one split, I'm also a little bit punished because 
there's a canyon after that immediately as well. So if you were to now imagine that you are the tree algorithm, so to say, and you're trying out a whole bunch of values, effectively what you're doing is you're just moving over this entire spectrum and you're kind of keeping track of where the lowest uh, error is, then you would probably end up somewhere around here. So that would mean as a tree algorithm, uh, what you would get is you would get your X value and you would kind of say, well, this is a good place to make a cut. You're gonna say, well, is X less than or equal to, let's say a 2.2? And if so, uh, here Y would be uh, 1.5 and maybe on the right-hand side over here, Y would be equal to, I'm eyeballing, but let's say minus 0.2 or something. Well, then that's great. But this is the first split. And from here, we could also say, well, given this cut, uh, let's cut some more. And to simulate that, uh, we're gonna have to introduce a slightly more complex widget. So here's an updated widget, I guess you could say. I still have the interface that I had before, but it's changed a little bit because now I've got this button that I could go ahead and click as well. And I'll first show how it roughly works before diving into the code in this case. So uh, let's move this slider uh, somewhere over here. Then now what I'm able to do is I'm able to click this button to simulate a cut, so to say. And then if I were to move the slider again, it's going to keep in mind that there was a cut over here and that I'm adding another cut to it. Now note that the implementation here is made in favor of intuition. It is slightly different from what actually happens inside of a tree. And that is because what I'm doing is I'm keeping track of cuts in a list over here, which effectively just says, well, uh, there's a region over here now, a region over here, and a region over here. And these are just buckets and I'm calculating average values. Intuitively, that makes complete sense. And when you think of a tree and you think of how things are uh, being split up, then it's not necessarily a stretch to see that in the end, you might also end up with four buckets when you have a tree. It's just that these cuts are a flat data structure and this tree technically can get a bit nested. So there are subtle differences, but just for the intuition, let's just see what it's like if we pretend to be a tree model. So I'm going to pretend to be a tree model and I'm going to really, really mimic that I'm just interested in optimizing this number over here. So somewhere around here, we have a relatively low number. So let's make a cut there. Then I'll keep in mind what the lowest value is on this side. And I don't seem to be getting much lower than 0 0.72. And what happens when I go to this side? Well, oh, I seem to be around 0 0.5 over here. That's pretty good and I don't get that anywhere over here. So I'm gonna introduce a cut around here. So, okay, um, if I were to move in this region, I don't get that much lower than 0 0.5. If I were to move in this middle region, I get closer to 0 0.4, so that's pretty good. And if I were to move in this region, I kind of get 0 0.4 over here as well. It's just not as low as over here. So I'll make uh, another cut over here. Using the same logic, I think I'm able to make another cut here. And at this point in time, we have made one, two, three, four cuts. And again, I'm kind of doing this by hand, but one thing to kind of keep in mind here, if this were an actual tree, so X goes in, if I recall correctly, I think I made the first cut over here. So I'm gonna put a one here. The second cut was over here, so that would be a two. I think this was the third, and this was the fourth. So we've got decision one, and you're either on the left of that or on the right. Then we've had decision two, and you're either on the left of that or on the right. From two, we get to three and four. And this is how we end up with these five buckets that are also reflected over here. Now, why do I emphasize this? The reason that I emphasize this is because 
a hyperparameter for constructing these trees is that there's usually a maximum depth that you're able to set. This is a hyperparameter that could prevent overfitting. And hopefully you can see that if you allow a tree to get super duper deep, then you are gonna end up with lots of these small buckets all across uh, the X spectrum over here. And maybe that's not something you want when you are doing boosting. And in fact, uh, that is actually something we saw in the previous video. I'm gonna scroll up again now. And if I look at the code from the previous video, you'll notice that I actually had a max depth of three. So each tree that I was adding to this local correction could really only go so deep. And hopefully that helps explain how this first model actually gets to have this particular shape. You can imagine that if we have a tree that keeps on going deeper and deeper, then at some point it will hit its maximum depth and it will not be able to search more in a particular region. If this particular tree wants to keep on going and we have a maximum depth of three, then the only way for it to improve is to consider the other branches that it has left uh, that aren't at the maximum depth just yet. Moreover though, and I think that's particularly interesting, if you're using boosting, even if you aren't going super deep, the fact that you are able to repeatedly apply a correction also means that maybe it's fine if you don't go super deep. We are always able to apply a local correction and even though that correction isn't going super deep, we are applying it to a small subset of the data as the boosting keeps on happening. This is also why the corrections that we're making are usually local and also less spiky as the boosting moves forward. And I hope that by adding this little bit of intuition on how the tree algorithm works, this aspect actually makes a whole lot of sense. That said, um, we aren't done with this widget just yet. Because when you play around with it, you may also notice an opportunity for the algorithm to improve substantially. Because the way that we're going about splitting here, well, that might just be computationally intensive. And we're gonna discuss an improvement on how to actually do this a bit faster in the next video.